Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is uh, your rabbi, Rabbi Stephen, and uh, fresh with my double Windsor knot and tie. Looking uh, color coordinated, I think. How about that, huh? Should've, you should have seen me in high school the way I dressed. <laughs> Complete contrast. But, um, you know, I, I, I take being a, a rabbi, especially uh, of uh, Congregation Temple Shalom of Ontario, very seriously, and um, I just like to look professional. You know, I know a little bit of a change from when I was a lot younger, but you know, life goes on. We grow, we evolve, we change. You know, to suit the the times. Um, it's the way life is, isn't it? Look at Judaism. We uh, one of the modules in the Miller course talks about rabbinic Judaism, Talmud, and really highlights and focuses on the transition from a temple-based Judaism, of course it wasn't called Judaism then, it was just what we did, into the rabbinic Judaism when the temple was destroyed and it became apparent to a lot of folks who had been previously Pharisees and really wanted to devote themselves to teaching Torah, believe that, you know, just because we're not from uh, the family of the Kohanim, you know, descendants of uh, Aaron, you know, or even from the tribe of Levi, you know, we still want to embrace Judaism and, and teach it. And the Pharisees ultimately became the rabbis who basically became the caretakers and the keepers of the Torah. And they adapted it to modern times of being without a temple. So what are some of the similarities? Well, there are, I believe, maybe one third of the commandments uh, of the Torah that we can't do anymore because we don't have a temple. And Hashem made it very clear that you will only do your offerings in a place that we will designate later. And that place, of course, became Jerusalem. So the big question is, well, two questions, actually. The first one is when the third temple is built, when the temple is rebuilt and restored, will we have the same type of offerings, you know, the animal sacrifices, and that really turns a lot of people off. People walk into Beit Deans. And by the way, congratulations uh, to the Shulmans, uh, new congregants to our synagogue. And uh, we welcome you with open arms. And uh, looking forward to calling you to the Torah. So without the offerings, how do we, what, what do we do? What do we do to, to observe Judaism? Okay. And the rabbis, again, went ahead and they adapted the temples, the, the cult of the temple sacrifice into the modern day Judaism. I personally believe that when the third temple is built or rebuilt, we, it'll be a big synagogue. I don't think we'll be doing offerings. Our prayers are our offerings. We, we offer from the heart and prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah talked about the fact that Hashem, and they were prophets, they were preaching the word of God, that God, Hashem, does not want your offerings. He wants your sincerity, or she wants, as, as you prefer, you know. Um, and in fact, this week's Torah portion delves a little bit into that, okay. We have gone from sacrifices to prayers, and it seems that's what our modern religious practice is built upon, okay. So, the Erchanan is a very critical, in my opinion anyway, portion because it discusses two very key components to what we do today. And what we do today, the prayers, center around basically two things, if you will. The Shema, which by commandment, by Torah, is recited twice a day when you wake up and when you go to sleep. And I've gone over this whole thing about waking up in the morning, going to sleep at night. Been there, done that. Let's leave it alone for now. But it's done twice a day, which is why we have an evening service, pretty much. Um, when the, the rabbis were putting together our prayer service, there was a lot of discussion about whether we should have an evening service. And the reason against having an evening service is because the services needed to replicate or compare with the temple services. So again, how do we preserve Judaism without a temple, without offerings? 
we offer prayers. We offer our hearts, our sincerity to Hashem. Okay? And that's our offerings these days. In uh, a lot of traditional old school prayer books, in the morning bracha, you know, we, we thank God, you know, we say matovu, we're glad to be here in whatever space we're, pra we're, we're praying in. Uh, we do gratitude for the gift of the body, gratitude for the gift of the soul. We do the blessings of the Torah. Since we'll be reciting passages from the Torah for, throughout the course of the day, we do our morning bracha. You know, bless our doubt, Lord God, King of the Universe, who you know, has enabled me to distinguish between day and night, has made me a Jew, has made me in your image, etc., etc. But at the end of that part of the service, there are passages from the Torah that talks about the labor, which is washing. And that's another thing that we do. We wake up, you know, we have the labor. We have our own personal labors, right? We have a little pitcher with the two handles. You know, we fill it up and we pass it to the left. One, two, three on the right. One, two, pass it to the right. One, two, three on the left. We say the bracha for washing the hands. And then we go into our prayer service. We put on our tali, we put on the fill-in. Again, we say some of these morning prayers. Now, the Sancino prayer book, the one that Rabbi Hertz wrote, uh, along with his uh, chumash, he basically has us putting on to fill-in and tali, apsuk in zimra. So, just a matter of preference, I guess, depending on what your what your um, uh, what your heritage, what your uh, tradition is. So. We do our prayers, okay, and we do the Shema, which is in this particular portion. We have the command, Ten Commandments, and we have the Shema. The new generation going into the land is going to need that. That's, that's critical. That's key, okay? So in the evening, so the, so the offerings were done in the morning, right at the beginning. That's why our morning service is called Shacharit, Shach, from the word Shachar, which means dawn. It's not called Bokarit, which is morning. It's called Shacharit. And technically, we're supposed to be saying this is the first tractate, the first daf, I'm sorry, the first page of the first tractate of the Talmud. All seven and a half years worth is when to say the Shema. And we say the Shema within the first three or four hours, the first watch of the Levites in the temple. We say it within that time frame. Because that's our offering. We're doing that instead of our offering. We're saying the Shema. Then we're saying the Amidah. And we're thinking, you know, there's a lot of supplications in there. It's the same three uh, bracha before and after, depending whether it's Shabbat, whether it's weekday, whether it's festivals. You know, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you can throw the matriarchs in there as well. Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Uh, God's might, Mechayim, Etim, revives the dead. I know the Reformed has a different version of that. God's name, Hail Kadosh, during the uh, ten days of awe between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, it's it's Hamelech, Hail uh, Kadosh, uh, Hamelech uh, Kadosh, the King, because we're pleading for mercy. Then we have a whole list of about uh, what is it, thirteen or so uh, prayers. Where we're asking for wisdom, for guidance, for repentance, for health, for uh, Jerusalem to be rebuilt, and you know, a few other things. The last three are the same. Uh, temple service, restoration of the temple, that is. Modima Nachulak, we give Thanksgiving, and then Sim Shalom, grand peace, and then we end it. Okay, so those are done three times a day. But the temple offerings were only done twice a day. It was only done in the morning during that first watch, three to four hours after dawn, and then right against dusk. So there are actually two versions of when you do the afternoon service, which is very short. It's the Ashrei, Katsi Kaddish, the Amidah, Mourner's Kaddish, uh, full Kaddish, Alenu, and then the Mourner's Kaddish. Very, very quick. But there was a sacrifice at dusk. And there are two versions because some people will do Mincha Ketana, which is at the which is right after, I hope I have this correct, uh, which is about a half an hour, that is the names, a half an hour after the middle of the day, which right now with daylight savings time be about 1.30. And then... Uh, or there's the Mincha Ketana, which is a small, I guess it's the small Gedola and Ketana, Gedola because you have more time, but Ketana, which is about an hour and a half before sundown, dusk, which is when the, the service was actually done. So, evening service. No evening offering? Should we have an evening service? Yeah, we got to fit Shema in there, so we'll do an Amidah, we just won't repeat it. And that was kind of the uh, trade-off. So, very important portion because... 
This is the second portion in Deuteronomy. First, it was the introduction. Moses gave a little travelogue. Well, you did this, and they did that. You know, and they were the spies, and there was the mana, and there was rebellion, there was plagues. Okay, now let's get to the meat of stuff. The people are going to conquer the land. You're going to need the Shema. You're going to need to acknowledge Hashem twice a day. You're going to need the Ten Commandments. And instead of remember the Shema, guard the Shema. Why? Think of this. Okay, this is my own commentary. Because they're going to be living among pagans. So keeping the Shema, a lot of the things we do is not just for Torah. Why, why Shema? It's a huki. It's a, it's a decree. Why, why do we need that rest? You know, rest whenever you want or if you don't. We need that rest because we need one day a week when we can devote ourselves to studying Torah, right? To acknowledging Torah. Because in amongst those pagans that have these crazy practices and sacrifices, we need to stay true, and that's why you need to guard the Shabbat. Not just keep it, but remember it, but guard it. Okay, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, everybody, for coming out and celebrating my birthday with me. It was fun. Tish B'Av. You know, well, that's another, that's a, that's a, that's a topic for another time. Shabbat Shalom.